briefly. Um, I'm going to go over briefly what it is that we're going to talk about today um, and then just kind of update you on a few other things that are coming too as well. So again, I'm Dr. Kim Godwin. I am an instructional designer for MTSU Online. Um, joining today um, are always the LT and ITC because they're awesome and they um, co-host these with us and we really appreciate the platform and the opportunity. Um, and then also Tara Perrin and um, Dr. Karen Hine, who are the other instructional designers for MTSU Online. Um, oh, and my Irish is coming out. Um, the being outside in the cold and then coming back inside in the heat, I'm flushed. Um, for those of you that relate joining the fire departments outside of our building, so yay. Um, so what we're going to talk about a little bit today in the announcement, we listed four things that we're going to cover, and we are going to cover all four of those. We're going to talk a little bit about dates um, and a couple of things about dates. We're going to talk a little bit about my evaluations. Uh, we're going to talk just a tish about um, open educational resources. And then we're also going to talk about how to add midterm grades to your grade calculation. So that is one less thing in your life that you have to do manually. Um, I know that you have to enter them into banner manually, but at least you don't have to do the math um, unless you like doing the math and then you can just ignore that part. Um, so again, we're recording and this will be available on our uh, MTSU online YouTube channel later today, we hope, maybe tomorrow. Um, and any resources that we talk about or show you are also, um, we'll either send them out, um, we'll figure that out for sure. We'll either send them out as a, a group to everybody that attended, um, or one of those things, but most of them are or will shortly be posted on the MTSU online uh, website. We have a resources page where we try to post things for y'all. So um, always check there because we create stuff all the time when people ask or need it. So make sure y'all check that out at some point. And we'll post that link in the chat here in a little bit too. So, all right, so let's get started. Um, we're gonna start first with um, some dates information. So I am gonna do some screen sharing. Uh, and if y'all can't see it, please do let me know. Um, but I'm going to do some screen sharing and you're going to see my huge screen and then I'm going to do some changes to make it be not quite so strange for y'all to look at. So, okay. Uh, I'm going to increase this font because I've heard that people can't hear or see things when it's uh, tiny. So um, this is my D2L, this is one of my development shells. So I just want to briefly go over dates a little bit. So the first thing that I did was go to edit course, depending on what yours looks like, you may have some of these options on the right side of your homepage in a widget, but I always just go straight to edit course, which is up in your nav bar. And then the one thing that I wanted to really show you on this page that's super helpful is under site resources, there's this cool thing called manage dates. Um, and manage dates is our friend uh, because manage dates gives you the opportunity to do um, bulk changing of dates within your class. There's this really cool one right here that says bulk offset dates. Um, so you can click on that one. I think I need to actually highlight stuff, but I don't want to accidentally bulk offset something in my class. Um, so when you bulk offset dates, a little box pops up and it asks you what you want to do and what things you want to change. Um, we're in the second day of class, so you probably have already set your dates. But if you go in and you realize that your dates are all off by two days, Instead of spending the time going through and manually changing your dates for all of the things in your class by two days, you can go right here to this bulk offset. You can choose what it is that you want to change. Is that start dates? Is it due dates? Is it end dates? And then you can offset in a direction. So you can forward it by two days or set it back by two days. Um, or you can do calculator range, um, which is where you start your start and then you push it forward um, days that way. So this may be of help if there's something kind of wonky within your class this semester, uh, but it's really helpful if you are copying from a master course into a summer or fall or even next spring. Um, it really helps. I am one of those people that actually does it twice when I am forwarding. I, I do like a 
365, 365 days. And then I actually look to see how many days I need to go one direction or the other instead of counting the calendar, however many times you have to count it. Just do it 365 and then it'll send it forward um, or 90 or however many you need, depending on how often the class is offered. Um, but when you set it to that, it'll push it out and then you can go in and reset it again a day or two in either direction as you need to. Um, but that is a fast and easy way to bulk all of the dates in your class and move things forward from semester to semester or term to term. Um, so does anybody have any questions about this bulk offset before I go to the next little thing about dates? And ask your questions in chat. Um, and if we don't get to them, Tara and Karen are really good about telling me to pay attention. So if I'm miss something y'all holler at me and let me know once you exit out of the bulk dates screen will you just show the specific tools so faculty will know specifically which tools can be changed this way i said basically all of them but that way yeah. they can see them yes absolutely okay. um so after, if bulk offset is not the thing that you want to do and you want to just look at setting specific tools up here after you first get on to the manage date page there is a filter by tool it's either all or specific if I only want to do things to my discussions, I can click the discussion box, apply filter, and then it will only show my discussions. And it shows that they're visible and then it shows start and end dates. Now, if I want to change my start end dates um, for my discussion, I can click that button again and I can do edit dates. And then it allows me to go in and, and set dates right there just in discussions. Um, you can do it individually. So if I only want to change this first one, then I can edit my dates from right here or I can do all of them at once. Um, but you can do it based on the actual tool or activity within D2L or you can just do the whole class, which is what bulk offset does. Um, does that, did that answer the question? Yes, no. So there, that's what that looks like. Awesome. Okay. Um, uh, yes. Can you, this is a new one for me. I don't know. I'm not quite sure the answer. It says, can you bulk update visibility status? That's not one of the options, correct? Because it's specific to tools. Yeah, it's specific to the tool. Um, that can only, if, if you, are doing your visibility based on um, the module that it's in, then you can change your visibility that way. Um, but you can't, not from this, pay, not from managed dates. Um, and then I don't think you can do it from elsewhere either. I've never tried, um, but we can see if there's something else. Um, can we make a note of that and get back to that if we have time? Does that work for y'all? Okay. Um, bulk update visibility. Got it. Okay. Um, moving on to the next thing about dates. Um, so this was one I actually wanted, I can show y'all from here. So here we are on this page and let's just say I want to um, make some changes to this first discussion that's listed in here. I don't even know what that one is, but at some point I should probably figure that out. Um, so in edit dates, the thing I wanted to show you um, is when this pops up and y'all can see that pop up box. OK, correct. OK, um, you'll see that there are start dates and end dates in this one. The biggest change that happened in D2L and it was actually right before last fall, um, but I don't know that it really impacted a whole lot of people last fall and the semester had already started and we were like two weeks in and nobody wanted to cause chaos. So um, the big thing that you'll notice now is that when you have start and end dates, you now have some options about how you list those, the viewability of it. I don't think that's a word, but the how you list how things can be seen. So in the past, um, instructional designers have been really big on saying, please don't use end dates because when you use an end date, it means the student cannot return to that resource. It cuts that resource out for the student. And one of the 
greatest benefits of online learning is that students can continue to return to their resource. They can continue going back to whatever that video was or whatever that document was or go back and review that discussion board again um, or whatever it is, especially if things in your class are scaffolded and are building on other things later in your class. If you end it and they can't see it, they have a hard time building for the future. So one of the big things that this has done is that you can have an end date with this and restrict some things about it without actually closing whether or not a student can see it. Um, so that's the point we wanted to show you on the thing with dates with this one is that you now have some end dates about things that they don't have access to it, um, they, can't they can't submit. So for me, if I wanted to end something and say, I don't want you to be able to submit to this anymore. This is closed. I still want you to be able to see it, but I don't want you to continue submitting discussions. I don't know if any of you have ever had that person that, I mean, this is spring. So in April, they start trying to submit discussions that were due in January and they're like, but I submitted it. Um, you can do the one that says um, visible with submission restricted after end, which means students can still see it, but they can't submit anything. Um, so that puts a block on that. Um, it's April and they're submitting a discussion from January, but they can still see it. So if they want to use something from that in a reflection that you're doing later in the semester, or they remember somebody saying something in a discussion that they want to talk about in a later activity in the class, they can still see it. They just can't submit. So that is the the one that we wanted to make sure that we showed you and kind of explain that just a little bit what that looks like they can still see it they just can't submit um so i hope that is kind of a helpful piece for y'all especially if you have any of those people that wait four months to submit something i'm sure none of you have ever had anybody do that me neither mm -mm, no <laughs> okay does anybody have any questions on the dates things um before I go and talk about the my evaluations. Do we get all those questions answered? It looks like there's a lot going on in the chat. So I assume that some things are getting answered. Yeah. Um, we uh, we did, however, can you show not just in managed dates, but can you go like to the, if you have some available Dropboxes into a Dropbox tool and show them how they could bolt edit dates directly for that specific tool if they wanted to. We had a couple people asking about that. Yes, so from Dropboxes, um, when you're in the Dropbox, when you click this, the little box up at the top next to where it says folder, you can then click bulk edit. And that also brings up your start, end, end due dates within Dropbox. Now notice there's that restricted thing. It's a little bit different here. Um, and we use due dates for these, for Dropboxes. Um, but that is, if you wanna, update a bunch of things within your drop boxes at one time with start and end dates uh, and due dates and you don't want to do the bulk method you can go straight to um, the Dropbox and do edit assignments straight from there good question thank you thanks tara um any others any other questions about dates um or information on that one i hope that was helpful for y'all um, okay, so the next thing that we're going to talk about, um, y'all should have gotten an email, I think it was yesterday afternoon, maybe it was this morning from Brian Hynote about my evaluations. Um, and I know that my evaluations causes a tish of stress, because some things have not gone as smoothly as we may have liked in the initial roll out um, and test semesters. So um, a couple of things to be aware of. First, if you can, please make sure that you read that email from Brian. I know there's a lot of information in it, but it's really helpful and it will help you make sure that you get the right information about your evaluations, both those coming this, this coming semester, the one that we're in at the end of the semester and how to really promote getting that information out and your students submitting their evaluations. But it also has some information uh, in there about how to make sure right people were evaluated. Um, if you happen to be in a class that had co-instructors um, or GAs or things like that, there were some 
some things that happen with that. So there might be some information that can help you with that. So please make sure that you go there and check it. Um, one of the things that to take note of about my evaluation, it needs to be in your D2L class somewhere. Um, if you have never altered your nav bar, uh, if you are only using default settings in D2L, my evaluation will show up up here in the nav bar. Notice that it is not in mine because I altered my nav bar. So I'm going to take you on the quick and dirty crash course version of how to add my evaluations back into your nav bar if that's where you want it. Over here on the right hand side of your screen is this little box that has three dots in it. When you click on that, and another little drop down comes up and it's edit this nav bar. If you click on that, it takes you to this page of the nav bar that we're looking at to add something to your nav bar. Under where it says links, click add links. And then you can search for my evaluation or you can just scroll down, but you can click my evaluation hit add, it now is in your class. You can change where it's located, it, that's up to you. Um, but now, my evaluation is now in your nav bar. So if you want it in your nav bar, if that's where it, it brings you joy and you want it back in your nav bar, all you gotta do is hit that add link button from edit nav bar and it will add it right back in there, hit save and close and you now have my evaluations in your nav bar. Um, if, you would prefer for it not to be in your nav bar because you like to keep your nav bar small and concise for your own well-being and you don't have a screen like the instructional designers that will hold 20 different things in your nav bar um, and you want it on your course homepage instead to do that you simply scroll down oh hey that moved really fast didn't it um, you scroll down to the very bottom of your homepage and you look for that same box with the three dots uh, and you'll click on that and you edit this home page. And you're going to scroll down just a little bit until you get to your widgets. Then you need to decide where you want your widget. So for me, it's already here. So I'm actually just going to delete it so we can add it back. Um, I'm going to click on the button that says add widgets. There's one on both sides that says add widgets. So wherever you need it to be for you is where you need to put it. Um, add widgets. We do that same thing that we either search or we scroll. My evaluations. And then we move this so that we can get to the add button because it was hidden. We add and it is now on our page. All we have to do is hit save and close. Now I use the dots to get to editing my nav bar and editing my homepage. You can get there through edit course. Um, I just think this is a little bit easier. Um, I think it's a little bit more direct. If you try to get to it through edit course, it sometimes takes you other places and you gotta kind of figure out where you are um, and which nav bar you're using and which homepage you're using. So you're kind of adding some extra steps to yourself if you do it through edit course. So I really strongly recommend if you want to change your nav bar or your web page to add my evaluations, using those little three dots is the way to get there because it takes you to the one that you are actively using and then you're not having to play the guessing game. Um, so I hope that helps. Um, so I also hope that helps with some evaluation issues and we can get some of those things under control. I know in Brian's email this morning, he mentioned something about um, contacting him if there were problems. So if, if you have questions about how to get it into D2L, feel free to reach out to one of us or to online at MTSU um, or you can contact um, Dr. Hynote and he uh, can answer your questions about my evaluations in general. So, okay. Um, any questions about my evaluation before we go to the next thing? Awesome. Um, the next thing we actually wanted to briefly tell you about, um, MTSU is a part of the state of Tennessee's first day initiative for resources. Um, that is textbooks and things like that. Some of you may already use the textbook one that's through the, the bookstore um, where the students get their textbook access as a part of the registration for class and 
they get their textbook ahead of time so they have it available on the first day of class. Um, so that is one of those initiatives. The other initiative is through Open Educational Resources and the OER Steering Committee. Um, so we have some, some resources that have been created in terms of those about first day initiatives. Um, the ones that I have that we have freely available on our website and will shortly be on the OER website um, are specifically about OER uh, and how um, you can show those to your students and get them the understanding. One of them is a PowerPoint. You are welcome to make edits and changes and things like that. It is available and you can download it and craft it to be your own. Uh, the other is an H5P that was created and is public and available to anyone who has H5P access. You can simply go into H5P and search for OER and it will come up and then you can insert it into your class. Um, it is a simple presentation of six slides. I can briefly show it to you. Um, it gives them instructions on where to find it, why things like this are important, how it saves them money, uh, and where to find more information about it. So this one is freely available to you. It's not available for you to edit. Um, so it is what it is. It's very basic and straightforward. Um, it's very generic in its terms. It doesn't talk about a specific course. It doesn't talk about specific types of resources. It says things like materials, PDFs, links, um, it's not specific to a textbook so that it can be used anywhere. Uh, and if you don't have H5P access, uh, we can help you with that. We have some instructions on that. And Tara is doing a presentation on that in like three weeks, I think. Um, so make sure you keep an eye out for that presentation announcement to come out because um, H5P is really cool. Um, I, I know I just showed you like five slides of a presentation and it's very basic, uh, but you can do all kinds of cool stuff with H5P. Uh, it embeds directly into D2L. So it's an embedded resource. The student doesn't have to download the PowerPoint to be able to view it accurately as a PowerPoint because it is in here as, as HTML. So it works directly in the um, D2L websites. Uh, so it's kind of cool. You can do a lot of cool, fun stuff with it. Um, so make sure you check that out. Um, but if you have questions about how to start an account, let us know um, if you don't see that resource on the online website. Uh, so that was all we wanted to talk about with that. Oh, and one other thing with OER, um, while I'm thinking about it, you can now designate in Banner whether or not your class is an OER class. So as you are starting to think about summer and fall courses for 2023 here on the second day of the semester, let's talk about fall. Um, but as you're starting to think about those things, if you know your class is gonna be OER um, and have free uh, OER or open access and have free resources for your students, you can designate that. So when students are registering for classes or searching for classes, they can actually add that as a filter. Um, so that's just something to kind of keep in the back of your mind if you know that you're going to use a course that doesn't have uh, purchase textbooks. Uh, so questions about first day initiative, um, either for print textbooks through the bookstore or, uh, or ebooks through the bookstore or through the OER. Anybody have any questions on it? Okay, so back to D2L. Um, so this is one that I, um, I get a lot of questions about this one. And so we thought it might be really helpful to show y'all how to add that uh, midterm grade calculation to your grade book. Um, it's fast and it saves some steps for those of you that need to submit midterm grades. So um, to get there, we're gonna go to grades under assessments. And practice along with me in your class because then your midterm grades will be set up in whatever class you're in. Yay, step one. Okay, from the grades page, go to manage grades. And so here we have all of my grade items. And then I am going to new and then add an item. And then we're gonna add a calculated which is the next to bottom one, uh, calculated. So calculated is then gonna come up. And so now I have a new item. I'm just gonna call it midterm. 
I don't have a category for it. Um, I don't need a category for it. I don't need a description because it really is just for me. Um, and then I'm going to go through at the bottom of that page before I hit save, before I do anything with it, I'm going to pick the things that I want in my midterm grade. So if you know that for your midterm grade, you're going to make it through um, the class I'm teaching, it has six modules. I know that I'm going to get through the end of module three um, for midterm. So I would go through and select everything in my grade book that gets through module three. Uh, my class is set to either teach in six or 14 weeks. So we just expand our modules and then contract them as necessary to fit without having to completely rebuild my class every semester. Um, so I would go through and I would select all of the ones that I want to have in my midterm grade. Um, so I'm going to use these four and that those are the only things that I want in my midterm grade. I'm going to hit save and close. It takes me right back to manage grades. You will see that it is down here. It is not visible. I didn't make it visible to students. Um, it's just visible to me. If you want to make it visible to students, you can simply just make it visible to users. Uh, or you can even go in and set, if you wanted to, from that same creation page, you can set a range on the days that you want it to be available. I tend to just leave mine hidden till I'm ready for them to see it. And then I make it visible. And then after a couple of days, I make it invisible again. Um, Cause I don't want it. I don't, I don't want there to be chaos. I try to avoid that as much as possible. Um, so from here, we'll go back to inner grades so that you can see what it looks like. Uh, and I think it was probably just calculating a grade. Um, and we will scroll on over and you will now see that I have a midterm. And it is 33% uh, because this person only has one activity that they got a grade for. So they're rocking a 33 in this class. Um, you probably had a few people do that too. Um, so there it is, there's your 33. So if you have to submit midterm grades, this will automatically tell you. And I, I'm, I've learned too over the last few months that not everybody knows about these cool color schemes in D2L, um, but this blue means A um, and the, the, this reddish color means you're not passing. Um, and there's a yellow and a green. Uh, so when you see the blue and then green and then yellow, that is A, B, C. So you don't have to do math um, as long as you know what it is that your grade averages are supposed to be. Um, so it's set up, um, its default is for it to be a, um, a 90 to 100, an 80 to 89, a 70 to 79, um, and a 60 to 69 for a D. If you have a different grading scale within your course, then don't rely on the color scheme. But if those are the basics that you use, the color scheme will help you get there. Um, but this helps because it gets that math there faster and you don't have to go through and really figure it out. It automatically does it from within your course. Um, so, and I guess right now, everybody's class has a new midterm grade. So you can go practice on all of your other ones now. Any questions about calculating midterms? Can you show how you can show to students how the midterm was calculated? Some faculty are asking about if they can show students which assignments are included in the calculation. <laughs> so this is the, this is it again. Um, this was the one I just created. Um, and so I have all of this information in here. Um, this is also where your display options are if you want um, students to be able to see it, but this also can tell you where some of that is. I add that information to my description where I said you don't have to add anything here up at the top. That's actually where I tell my students what's in it. I tell them it's everything through module three. So I literally just type in that it's um, everything through module three. Um, and then click where it says allow users to view grade item description and it tells them what's in it. Um, you can also click some of the other options within restrictions and um, other areas that can make things show it. For me, it's faster for you and easier for you to just add that little sentence because then you don't have to worry about clicking a bunch of extra buttons. At least that's what I do. Um, 
and here's where you can do your availability dates. Where I was talking about, I leave mine invisible, but you can change the dates. You can set it so that it has specific dates that it's open for students and closed for students. Did that help answer the question? Okay. What other questions do y'all have? Um, do you have, or hey, any Kim. other questions on midterm? Yes. All right, because you know I can't be easy. Um, if a student wants to know what their grade is, say in week 12, which is after midterm, is there a way to set like a running grade that they can see that isn't like a percentage of the final grade? Because if you if you set it visible and it says they have 33%, well, that's 33% of the ultimate final as opposed to what has been completed. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, because, it, well, if you get, when you're setting it up, if you set it up so that ungraded items count as zero, then okay. it, it shows that percentage as this is the amount of the whole course that's been completed. I actually tend to set mine that way, not because I like people to freak out when they see that number, but if you set it so that it drops ungraded items, it gives students a false sense because- That's it, what I was thinking. Yeah, it because it, if the student hasn't submitted anything but their introductory post and they got 100 on their introductory post, but they haven't mm -hmm. submitted anything through week 12, it would still show them as getting 100. Okay. So you want it to be that it's the zero um, if you want to show mm -hmm. the ongoing and explain that to them. The other way I would say to do it is that you can actually set set several of these so that you can have some ongoing ones that become available throughout. Oh, that's a good um, idea. And then just kind of set it up at various stages throughout the semester mm -hmm. that it would incorporate all the things to that point. Um, it takes a little bit of time to do that, but once you've done it, you don't have to go back and do it and you can set those dates and it will automatically release to the students on the day that you set for it to be available and it will auto grade up to that point. Um, and you can just tell them that's what it is. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. And that wasn't that hard. That was an easy one. Any other questions about calculations or information in gradebook? Awesome. Um, I am actually gonna stop my screen share. Um, and then we have covered the four things that we were supposed to cover today. Um, the one other thing I'm gonna tell you before we um, turn off the recording and then really just open it up for random questions that anybody has because I know y'all know that if you're in one of these and you have questions if you stick around you get us and we answer your questions um so um the one other thing we wanted to add is is some of you will run into things based on your courses and your needs uh, and different things like that before you freak out um or go search the Brightspace community um or panic uh, make sure you reach out to somebody in MTSU online um, or Scott in the LTNIC or um, anybody over in the FITSE and see if they have an answer um, or a pretty resource that has been created. Um, every time MTSU online answers a question for faculty and it necessitates the need for a resource, we create one. Um, so checking out that MTSU uh, online website, which is just mtsu.edu slash online and then go to faculty services from there. Um, anytime we have stuff like that, we try to load it there. We try to make things available, uh, but check with us um, before you search Google or YouTube or any of those things like that to try and um, figure out how to do a resource, mostly because things that might be available at one institution are not necessarily turned on and structured the same way at ours. Um, like we actually ran into that earlier today that we were looking for something and the instructions for one institution don't match what ours looks like because every D2L instance is just a little bit different based on the institution. Um, so make sure if you do run into something um, that you're like, well, how did this change? Why did this change? How do I fix this? I know I did this once before and now I can't remember how to do it. Make sure you reach out to us because that is actually what um, everybody in the, the FITC, everybody in the LT and ITC and all of us at MTSU Online, we're here to support you. And we may already have that and maybe a good time saver for you. Um, so, and the best email to get us is um, online at mtsu.edu um, because we actually all get that. Um, so I can't tell you who you'll 
get to respond. Um, it, who knows, maybe all of us at once. Um, but that is really a great way to get in touch with us. Um, you can always send things to us individually, especially if you know that we're your instructional designer based on you've developed with us before or we're the instructional designer for your college. Um, we're more than happy to help you out. But if you don't know for sure, you can reach out to that online and somebody will get back to you as soon as we can. So that was the last little plug of support that I had. So does anybody have any questions? I'm going to go ahead and stop recording.